and here we are as ever was on a Wednesday night tonight being Wednesday the 18th of September um, the day before World Vaping Day and tonight on VT Talk it's just the two of us again one of us in a giddy mood and the other one not far behind how are you doing Sav if you can see anything without laughing I'm absolutely fine Dave how's you <laughs> I'm, I'm a lot better for listening to you giggle it's nice to know it's not just me um there's actually plenty to be uh, to be happy about that's been going on lately we've we've got bits and bobs of stuff that we want to talk to you about tonight a little bit of video to bring you um that, that was aired in the states last night um but that that'll all be coming up after the new titles um but first from the effervescent loveliness the bounteous bubblicious babe that is sav and myself i'd like to bid you welcome to VT Talk, he said, try and remember which number the titles is on. Here we go. And there you go, the new titles, with a little bit of a fade out thing on as well, which is all dead good. Um, yes, did chat like the titles? Yes, chat seemed to like them. New good. titles, me likes, says Vapor Man. All twisty words all over the place, which is all good stuff. <laughs> um, shall we Shall we blast on and do the show? I think that's probably a good idea, yes. Now, here in the UK, I, I think we're we're probably a little bit better off in many ways than our cousins in the states because we haven't got stanton glance over here and we're better off than our cousins in the antipodes australia and all of that because we haven't got simon chapman over here but unfortunately both of those eminent worthies inform the debate over here and last night um, on Al Jazeera America, Stanton Glance was on the telly with Carl Phillips talking about ACIGs, and some enterprising viewer cleverly recorded it off his telly. So you might see halfway through there's a little bit of this recording's about to clash, don't let that worry you. I thought you might like to watch it. It's nine minutes of, um, I'm going to call it debate. But in actual fact, it's not. It's nine minutes of outright lying on one side. And on the other side, Carl Phillips trying to bring everything back into perspective and actually tell the truth. Have a watch of this. I found it enormously interesting, especially when, listen, right at the beginning, when the presenter, who apparently has won awards, did you know that? Presenters mm -hmm. won awards for being a presenter. And listen what he says about flavour. It's, it's really... Yeah, here you go. E-cigarettes are often called a healthier alternative to cigarettes. They're a rechargeable electronic cigarette which releases a liquid vapor instead of smoke and includes what's called flavor cartridges that can limit the amount of nicotine you get. The industry says they do not include tar or several other additives that make smoking so dangerous. But there are still questions about what's in them and the FDA's plans for regulation that haven't taken hold, at least not yet. Sales have shot up. Estimates are anywhere from one to one point seven billion dollars this year. Bloomberg Industries even reports that they will overtake traditional cigarette sales by the year 2047. By the way, those reach 80 billion in sales every year. But just how safe are e-cigarettes and what are the dangers for minors? Dr. Stanton Glantz joins us from San Francisco. He is the director of the Center for Tobacco Control Research and Education at the University of California, San Francisco. And Carl Phillips joins us from Philadelphia. He is the scientific director of the Consumer Advocates for Smoke-Free Alternatives Association. Uh, thank you both for joining us. Carl, uh, I want to start with you. E-cigarettes still do deliver nicotine, which is addictive and has health risks. Why shouldn't e-cigarettes be put in stores with the same regulations as regular cigarettes have? 
Well, and they certainly should be regulated in various ways. Um, my organization supports, for example, um, bans on sales to minors. But we shouldn't confuse the, the effects of e-cigarettes with those of cigarettes. We're talking about a product that's in the order of 99% of less harmful. Nicotine isn't completely harmless, but it's so close to harmless we can't actually detect the risks from it. So though certainly regulation is a good idea, the right regulation, um, we, we shouldn't be thinking of them as, as at all similar to cigarettes in, in terms of their impact on, on public health. Yeah, Dr. Glantz, as, as, uh, as Carl says, aren't e-cigarettes healthier? And if they are able to get some people uh, off their addiction to cigarettes, isn't it a good thing? Well, I, the way I like to think about it is to say e-cigarettes are less dangerous than cigarettes. Cigarettes are by far the most dangerous consumer product in the, on the market. And so saying that e-cigarettes are less dangerous than cigarettes is a little bit like saying jumping out of the 10th story of a building isn't as bad as jumping out of the 50th story. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, the fact is that e-cigarettes deliver nicotine, which is a highly addictive drug. It's particularly problematic for kids because uh, if, if kids smoke cigarettes or take nicotine through e-cigarettes or other forms of tobacco, it actually changes their brain development and uh, in, in ways that they just never recover from. And e-cigarettes, while Dr. Phillips is right, they do deliver lower levels of toxins than conventional cigarettes, but they still deliver, in addition to nicotine, uh, formaldehyde, uh, a group of, of volatile organic compounds, heavy metals, and the ultrafine particles that, that comprise the aerosol uh, that delivers the nicotine themselves can have adverse health effects much in the same way that the fine particles in regular cigarettes smoke. Well, and certainly nicotine isn't good for you. It increases your heart rate by 10 to 20 beats a, a minute. Your blood pressure can go up. It can cause nausea and diarrhea. It's addictive. But on the other hand, uh, Dr. Glantz, we've got uh, caffeine out there, which is bad for you. So is alcohol. Uh, caffeine perfectly available to, to children. Why well, would, uh, would e-cigarettes be any worse? Well, it, because nicotine is a way more addictive and dangerous drug than caffeine is. Uh, nicotine, uh, this, in 1988, the Surgeon General said nicotine was an addictive drug. Nicotine mimics uh, ke the chemical in your brain that uh, nerve cells communicate with. And so when you start putting nicotine in your brain, it actually changes the cells in your brain and the chemistry of your brain in ways which never totally reverse. The other thing that you said earlier, which uh, I don't think is true, is that e-cigarettes help people quit smoking. There are two big population level studies of people using e-cigarettes to quit smoking. One of them shows they don't work, and the other one shows that people trying to quit smoking with e-cigarettes actually do worse than people using, who, who aren't using them. So while e-cigarettes are less dangerous than conventional cigarettes and less polluting than conventional cigarettes, they still are exposing people to toxic chemicals and they're still polluting the air for the people around, uh, around the people who are using them. Carl, your response to, uh, to Dr. Glantz, both on the, on the pollution and on whether the e-cigarettes e can help people get off cigarettes? Yeah, there's, there's no question that e-cigarettes help people get off cigarettes. There are... I mean, hundreds of thousands of Americans, over a million people worldwide who have quit smoking using e-cigarettes. A large majority of these, um, when asked about their experience trying to quit smoking, report trying every other method that's been recommended for smoking. So we're talking about people who would still be smoking if they didn't have access to e-cigarettes, and yet a million people have quit. That, that's a public health miracle. And well, in I terms of the risks... In terms of the risks, you mentioned caffeine, and that, that's the perfect analogy, um, because nicotine, absent smoke, is, is very similar to caffeine. In fact, um, it's, it's not actually all that much more difficult to quit using pure nicotine than caffeine. There's something different about cigarettes, clearly, um, but people who switch to e-cigarettes typically find that they can take them or leave them after they've quit smoking for a while and are using e-cigarettes. It's, it's a very different experience. Um, they choose to keep e using e-cigarettes because they know that they're low risk and it makes them happier. It improves their lives to keep using them. 
Um, all in all, it seems like uh, an upside on, on, every, on every side. And in terms of the chemistry and the chemical exposures, um, CASA, my organization, recently sponsored a, a, a systematic review by a professor here in Philadelphia who reviewed all of the available information about the chemistry, 9,000 different observations from, from various studies, and concluded that there's no reason to believe that, that the chemicals pose any risk. As you say, nicotine speeds up your heart. That might create some, some minor risk. That's why we say it's probably about 99% less harmful. No, we, We're not merely saying it's a little bit less harmful than smoking. It's basically the same as abstinence in terms of your total we, risk. We have uh, some that, social media re reaction. Let me, let's your, get some social ridiculous. media reaction from Hermela for one second. Hermela. Thanks, Antonio. Carl Dirk Hansen on Twitter says, it's good to see e-cig success stories. Now, how do you kick addiction to vaped nicotine? It's still a ball and chain, and you're still addicted. What do you say to that? Well, well, the, for, for, well that's, for, for that's one thing, right. If, if and the and and I mean, I I don't understand where uh, Dr. Phillips is getting his data. There there are two published peer review studies of how e-cigarettes uh, relate to people actually quitting smoking at a population level, and neither one of them shows that they, they actually help people quit. The, now, the, it may the, the be that some people use them and, and, and they do better, but what, what these big studies show is that for everybody that an e-cigarette might help quit, there's at least one person and maybe more than one person who they keep from quitting. And the real no. problem with these cigarettes, actually, which we haven't talked about at all, is what's called dual use because most people who are using e-cigarettes are still smoking conventional cigarettes at the same time. So they're kind of getting the worst of both worlds. Yep. And the, the CDC <laughs> is concerned about them being a, a gateway to regular smoking and they're concerned about appeal to children because of some of the flavors that are being added into these e-cigarettes. Unfortunately, uh, we have run out of time to address that any further. I uh, really appreciate it, Dr. Glantz and Carl for, uh, for this discussion. This is a a changing industry and uh, we'll, we'll see uh, how it develops. Appreciate you both being with us tonight. The show may be over, but the conversation continues on our website, aljazeera.com slash consider this or on our Facebook or Google Plus pages. You can also find us on Twitter at AJ Consider This. We'll see you next time. Well, there you go. Ha, that was Stan the Mechanic, Stanton Glantz. Now, just, just so you know, just in case you don't know, Carl Phillips is a proper doctor. He's done PhDs and everything, and he knows his way around the human body. He's a proper, educated man that knows about these things. Not just an epidemiologist, but he actually has qualifications to do with these, these bodies and stuff like that. Stanton Glantz is a mechanic. He's a mechanical engineer. That's all I'm saying. And I'm also going to say, I'm thinking about shaving my beard off, if I'm going to get mistaken for him. Sav, what we got in chat? After I, I read out the ones I can't read out on air, um, Gary Wood says, haven't these people worked out what's in e cigs yet? Um, Vape and Sam read the jumping out the window. He says, the reality is the difference between jumping off a building and giving the choice to exit out of the front door. That's more accurate, yes. Yeah, Mark Shaw says, <coughs> uh, first quote from Glance, e-cigarettes are less dangerous than cigarettes. There, he said it. Forget everything else he said. But the only Kronos, true thing he did see, actually. Yeah. Cronus has said, hold on a second, it's already well established that nicotine enhances cognitive function. Mm -hmm. Jeff Benley says, go to the gym, uh, that'll increase your heart rate as well. Old Gitter says, so he's now calling me a nut job because I inhale nicotine. <coughs> <laughs> Doug Phillips says, this guy would not know a punch in the face, even if you punched him in the face. Martin Chambers says, is it just me or are they trying to interrupt Carl Phillips every time he makes a pro a sick point? Woody Vapen has said, methane is a chemical and it comes out of cows' bottoms. Should we kill cows? Are you sure he said bottoms? No. <laughs> <laughs> All kids said, so we're addicted. So are millions of people who rely on caffeine to start their day. And Kronos said again, wow, a 50% success rate. Well, that beats the pants off NRT. Yeah, and and that's 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 not wrong. However, however, it's not the comparison we should be making. In actual fact, that that bit that Mark uh, Shaw came up with is the right one. They're safer than cigarettes. That's really all that matters. Mm -hmm. 
because of this whole medicinalisation malarkey. Um, and and we, we need to be covering some of that. But before we get to the covering all of that, it's kind of, somebody did say, was it chair dance day yesterday? Yes. And it is. It is. Yes. Because I'm a happy bunny. And I'll tell you why I'm a happy bunny. Um, and I'm going to stop lounging about like an idiot. You may not be aware of this. If, you, if you're on Twitter, and if you're not, you should be. If you're on Twitter, you'll have seen it plastered all over yesterday. And thank you very much to Lily, uh, one of the DE Talk team, who actually went to the courts yesterday and kept us updated on the old Twitter. Um, she came out and said it was a big thumbs up. Three cases got taken to the German high courts um, for decision yesterday. And these were appeals. At least two of them were definitely appeals. And I think the third one possibly was as well. You may recall that going back into, I think it was May, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. There were three cases where the German authorities had gone marching into various different stores and confiscated all of their gear and said, you can't sell e-liquid, it's a medicine, it's not licensed, you can't sell it, we're taking it away. That got taken to court and the courts, the lower courts, but still like our Crown Court, I suppose you would call it, said, actually, no. They're not medicines. You can't claim them to be medicines. They are not medicinal by function. They are, and this is the important part, a substitute for smoking cigarettes. So, yesterday, they appealed that. The authorities appealed it, went to court, and in the High Court in Germany, it was reiterated. It was restated. You cannot call e cigs or e juice medicinal by function because they are a substitute for cigarettes. They are used in exactly the same manner as cigarettes. They do exactly what cigarettes do, but without causing all of the harm. They are not medicines. And I make that six nothing to us in Europe. Six, now that's not a bad score. Sunderland would like that. Middlesbrough would like that. Now that's happened in Germany and I've been tweeting every MEP I know and, and sending them the information and I have seen certain MEPs retweeting it to all of their colleagues and we need to be telling all of our MPs and MEPs all about this. I, it's quite important and I know chat will have had something to say about that stuff. Well, chat are saying, uh, Gary Wood has just typed in, yeehaw, and <laughs> they're talking about how that would apply in the UK. Um, would we have to wait for it to become law before we can take it to court? Can you take a proposal to court? That type of thing. It, it, that, that's a very interesting point. Um, it's actually already been recognised by the MHRA. They've tacitly kind of recognize that that's the case that if it goes to court they're not going to win which is why uh they've they've said that at the moment e-cigs don't require a license they need the eu to say that e-cigs need a marketing authorization before they can do anything that is actually a fact they know if it goes to court it's going to get thrown out they are aware of that that reply um that, that, we, that we spoke about two weeks ago that came back from them, confirmed it. And when you read through the Q&A uh, on, on the MHR, uh, God, the MHRA website, it says exactly the same. That at the moment, under the current guidelines, the current rules and regulations that they abide by, they cannot make them medicines because they're not claimed to be medicines. But here's the thing. If you make even an oblique claim that these things are medicines, they can come after you. That's the point. So if you make the same claims for e-cigs as are made for NRT, and bear in mind, as was pointed out last week quite eloquently, NRT is now indicated for temporary abstinence in a situation where you cannot or are unable or are unwilling to smoke, like in a restaurant or a pub or something like that, 
um, and for all of the other uses. In other words, for, for uh, harm reduction, if you like. They've kind of got these harm reduction things. So the only legitimate claim that can be made for an ASIG now is that it is an, a, a substitute for smoking, an alternative way to smoke. That's the safest thing that you can say about them. You can't say that they're for quitting, no matter how much stunt and glance would like you to, because the understanding about quitting is actually no longer nicotine cessation, but smoking cessation. But if you say it's an alternative way to continue what you were doing before, then that's fine. You can make that claim because you're saying, look, it's exactly the same as a cigarette, only safer. That's pretty much the size. That'll probably have caused a little bit of consternation, has it? But there's been a, a debate sort of running throughout all that. Um, Andy Day has said, regarding um, something that was brought up earlier, um, he says, sorry, I disagree. Uh, we should hit them hard with the NRT doesn't work and follow it with big tobacco or losing money. So they want a to make more money. Um, I've been taking some advice from the likes of Clive Bates and people that know what they're talking about on this. And I've actually got five points that we need to be majoring on. A lot of the, the stuff that we get caught up in is it's just frill it's frippery it's frillage around the side and it actually does distract everybody i think from the central core so I've well it's a quote that i've heard clive bates use a few times it's in the noise and i really like that i think that sort of covers because you get the debates of should we call them e-cig should we call them pv should we do this should we do that and it it's all seems to be in the noise compared to the big picture well, yes, yes, absolutely right. I mean, and he, he refers to two kinds of noise. There's the statistical mm -hmm. noise. Yes. And then there's just the general noise that surrounds it all. I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll take a, a quick ad break. Um, and when we come back, I'm going to run through these points because there's a, there's a bit of a call to action. The timing is actually very good. There's a, a lot of what's been going on now uh, informs the action that we need to be taking as consumers, as vapors. Um, and I think we're being given on a plate a voice um, and a very, very effective argument. And I, and I want to kind of cover that through um, and explain what's, what's coalescing from all sorts of different areas. And I've got some great advice here from Clive, who at the moment is in Turkey, so he can't be with us tonight. Otherwise, he'd have passed this on himself. And I, and I want to run through this with you. So we'll take a quick, quick, a quick ad break. And when we get back, we'll go through all of that. Don't go anywhere, because this is actually really rather important. Will not be long.
and we are back in the room here on VT Talk on the 18th of September, Wednesday night. Um, time's just come to 9.25, 35 seconds. Um, yeah, the information, right, let, let's, let's kind of get into this. There is a central core to the whole of the argument and that central core is you and me and every other vapour, not just in the UK, but throughout Europe. And because of what's just been said in the German courts, and also because the time at the moment is very, very good for uh, focusing politicians' attention, it being conference season, and the Labour Party conference starts on Sunday, I believe, in Brighton, and there's already been a suggestion that people might like to congregate down there and, you know, stand around the steps on the way in. There'll be all kinds of Labour politicians going to that, including one Ms. McAvan, I believe, who many people would like to have a polite conversation with. Might not be a bad idea if you're around the area to go and, you know, have a wander about, see what's cooking, sort of style. I shall say no more than that and leave it with the good people of that parish and its surrounding environs. I can see your face, Sav. I'm not saying a word. No, but take a camera. Please. Anyway, <laughs> Please do right. Me. What we need to be doing around about now is getting hold of both our MPs and our MEPs in the first instance, again, via email. The time is now to start another email campaign. Yet again, it's not right to do one central one and everybody copy and paste and send it off because it'll, it'll just not be taken any notice of. But there are five points that any letter needs to cover. And they need to be covered in your own words. But I'm going to try and give you, if you like, a form of words that Clive thinks will be useful. Um, and it's how it affects you, how it affects us, that we need to be majoring on here. And the first point, point number one, is that medicines regulation for electronic cigarettes would destroy the existing supply chain and most businesses. Now you might think, well, that's for businesses to talk about. Well, it is, except that if it affects us in any way, shape or form, it affects us because it removes choice. It makes it more difficult for you and me and Sav and every other vapor to be able to get hold of ASICs. And you might wonder, well, why is that the case? And the fact is, if ASICs are to be made a medicine, the products need to be manufactured in pharmaceutical industry production and distribution facilities. That's not speculation, that's fact. It has to be done under what's called GMP, Good Manufacturing Practice. And that isn't just what you would think, oh, well, that's good manufacturing practice. Actually, there are very, very strict rules and regulations about it. It requires all kinds of certification and a shed load of money. And Clive says the investment cost or difficulty of securing compliant outsourcing contracts will wipe out the existing supply chain and almost all vendors in the market today. Replacing them with either big tobacco affiliates cross-subsidized from their tobacco business or big pharma, which looks reluctant and doesn't like or understand the market. Now, you might also remember I told you that I'd heard that McNeil were coming out with an ASIG and I've had a few more bits and bobs of information leaked out and it is a first generation one it's not very good there's no more to be said than that it probably wouldn't get a marketing authorization if it came from ASICs R Us but because it's McNeil it might do so there are two products potentially on the market so that's the first point the first point is that medicinal regulation would destroy the existing supply chain and most businesses which would make it much more difficult for any of us to get an AC. That's point number one. The second point is that it creates a de facto ban on most products. That comes about because medicines regulators can't explain how they will deal with 
thousands of combinations of flavor, strength, excipient, that's the VG or the PG, and nicotine density. That's 36 milligram, 24, 18, 45, whatever it happens to be. Because each separate combination would need a license, the vendors would need to bear the costs and those costs would run to billions of euro or more likely drastically reduce the range of their products and yet and this is the important part it's the diversity and the personalization of all of these various different devices juices flavors and strengths that are key to the appeal to smokers Despite what some MEPs claim, this is a ban in practice on many products and will be seen as such by the likes of you and me. That is factual. We know that. Now, when we were down in London last week, do you remember we, we did this can you wave your e-cig in the air thing, Sav? Yep. Now, both Sav and I were in a position to have a look at the faces of the public health, but the people that weren't vapors, the people that didn't know the market all that well. And what did their faces look like, Sav? They were shocked. They were absolutely shocked at the... I mean, there wasn't a single one of us in that room that had the same ASIC. There, w there were no two alike? No. There were no two alike. There, w there, was, uh, there was everything. I, I couldn't even name everything that was there. But there were no two setups that were the same. And, I, and I, I made the point, if you asked any two to swap, they'd probably go, actually, no. I don't like that, whatever it is, and the battery doesn't suit as I like a box or I like a cylinder or whatever it is. The beauty of, of the eSig market as it stands at the minute is there's everything there to suit everybody. If you don't like that, then you might like that. And if you don't like that, you like that. And if you don't like this, you like that. And if you don't like that, you like this. The de facto ban that medicinal products would bring would make it impossible for you as a vapor to find the combination of products that suits the way you use them. It's the, the customization and personalization that makes these things work as well as they do for as many people as they do. I mean, I'm absolutely certain that there are people out there getting on with cigar likes and love them to death because they suit them. But that wouldn't suit me and it probably wouldn't suit many people watching this show now or on video on demand. But the fact of the matter is you can make that point to your MP and your MEP. How the personalization and customization works for you and how people you know that have taken up e-cigs as a direct result of your using them have moved away from what you use onto something entirely different. It could be flavor wise, it could be uh, nicotine density wise, the strength of liquid in other words, it, it, it could be in any number of ways. And if you make that point, again, they're gonna take that into note. The third point that he makes is that medicinal regulation makes e-cigs harder to buy than cigs, than ordinary fags. Now this is kind of the non-selfish bit, if you like. In many countries in Europe, medicinal products would only be available in pharmacies or other approved premises. People need access to these pro products at the times and places that they can buy cigarettes. Now, you and I both know, you can buy fags 24 hours a day. There's always a garage open, there's always a corner shop. During daylight hours, you can get to the supermarkets and there are 24 hour supermarkets now. Hypermarkets, yep. what the hell are they, big? It's big shop, places. It, yes, it's shopping, I'm a bloke. Mm. We, we, we don't do shopping, unless it's for <laughs> bras. Um, and not even then necessarily. Um, there is the internet. But mm. if, if you if you want to go and buy an e-cig, no matter what time of day it is, I can guarantee you that you don't have to travel very far in order to be able to do it. It might not be one that you like, but you'll be able to get one 24 hours a day. In the rest of Europe, and actually in the UK, if all of this goes ahead, that's not going to be the case. 
And if it's harder to buy an e-cig than it is to buy an ordinary tobacco cigarette, need I explain the maths? According to Stanton Glantz, we're all addicted to nicotine. Well, let's take him at his word on that one. And let's say, yes, we are all addicted to nicotine. And so, if it's easier to buy a tobacco cigarette than it is to buy an electronic cigarette on the occasion when your e-cig runs out or whatever it happens to be, your battery's flat and you can't charge it up. If it's easier to buy a tobacco cigarette than it is to buy an electronic cigarette, which one are you going to buy? The maths is fairly simple. It makes no sense, says Clive, to restrict availability of electronic cigarettes to below that for cigarettes. And even if member states could in theory change that, they won't. They just won't. So that's the third point that you might want to raise. The fourth point, and this might gain a lot of traction with MEPs, is that medicinal regulation of e-cigs favours the cigarette industry, the tobacco companies. There are many aspects of medicines regulation that impose expenses, burdens or restrictions that are high, unnecessary and not imposed on the cigarette industry or others like the drinks industry. For example, pharmacokinetic tests, pharmacovigilance, certain qualified personnel, exacting quality control standards, pre-approval of packaging and advertising. None of those would apply in the same way to the battle to tobacco industry as they would to the medicines e-cig industry. The barriers to entry would be higher and the barriers to continued business would be higher. And again, from our perspective as vapors, that would make e-cigs harder to get than tobacco cigarettes. And that situation is completely and utterly senseless. And the fifth point, it creates unintended consequences. Medicine regulation creates high and unnecessary ban barriers to entry for firms and for products. The effect will be forced closures of the existing firms, as we've just said, and consolidation into a few tobacco industry backed affiliates selling compliant commodity products at higher prices, no, what, no matter what Mrs. Matavan says about VAT, at higher prices and with little choice for users. With a sluggish pace of innovation and improvement, you've just got to look at how often any changes are made to NRT. And NRT, if you like, a medicinalized nicotine containing products. So users will not be passive and this is the important part excessive regulation will promote more home mixing extraction of nicotine from tobacco leaves internet trade black market activity and we know that the black market activity will be there people will order from abroad i already know of a few clubs nascent clubs i've heard of there's rumors going about about clubs of people that will get together and they'll bring in five kilograms of whatever at a time. And they're not going to bring it a milligram in, are they? If you're going to bring five kilograms in, you might as well bring 250 milligram uh, concentration of nicotine and then dilute it down. That brings with it its own, its own dangers. What it will do is to create an unregulated space with greater health risks and more criminality. It will also mean that many return to smoking or would never make the sustained switch that gives us the big public health result. In short, medicines regulation focuses on creating a better medicinal product, whereas the public health is served by having a better alternative to cigarettes. So all of this stuff that goes on around the periphery is incidental. Selling to kids, incidental. Kids using it, incidental. Flavours, incidental. All of this is incidental to those five points. And those five points are the five points that we as vapors need to be talking to our, our MPs and MEPs about. But here's the twist. 
I was talking to Catherine Devlin the other day and she too was at this meeting last week. You remember, Sal? Mm -hmm. And she was quite taken by the faces of the non-vapers, the public health people, the people that had come from outside of the industry and, and really didn't know anything about it. When we all held our various different devices up and their faces were a picture. And that's what you need to do in your email. Take a picture of yourself with your device or devices of choice. I mean, not in a daft pose, but just so that they can see one, you are a real person and two, what you are using. The fact that you've got something in your hand and show them it, this is what I use. And annotate the picture, put a little, a little explanatory paragraph under there to say that what I use looks nothing like a cigarette. What I use delivers what I need, but it won't suit everybody. Put that picture in there, they know that you are a real human being and that it's a real human being that's talking to them, making five very good points. Not messing about with anything, just telling them like it is. Now, I'm not gonna put that on, on the web. I'm not gonna put it down as a, a letter or anything like that. All you need to do is take those five points, watch it on video on demand, word it your own way, get that to your MP and to all of your MEPs and make the point that e-cigs need to be protected. E-cigs are the best tool that we have. Now, you'll have heard in that video with Stanton Glance, they're predicting 2047. I've also seen predictions of 2021 for the date that we get past 50% of the tobacco market. Stanton Glance even admitted it. They've got a 50% success rate. So I've, I wanna, oh, she's gone, hang on. We'll try and get her back. She's disappeared. I don't know what's happened here. Stop, come back. I'm lost without her. We'll, um, we'll go to a swift set of adverts while I try and get Sav back. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. And we're back, um, and I understand that the stream dropped there for a while. Sav, did it? Yes, it did. Kat says we were down for a, a minute, couple of minutes at most. Oh dear. Um, which bit did we did we drop before I said what I wanted people to do? I'm not sure. I did everybody hear what they had to do? I didn't hear what we had to do. So. Right. Um, did we get to the bit about the photograph? About the picture. Yeah, we got the photograph. Got the photograph, so you need to take a photograph. Then, then 
every MEP and MP that you contact will see that you are a real person and they will see what you are using and they'll get different pictures from different people so somebody might have a 134 with a, an Ithaca on top somebody might have a 134 with something else on top an ego there'll be a plethora of different pictures going to every MP and MEP and it's got to make them think it's got to make them think we cover those five points everybody covers those five points if you, if, if you don't agree with one of them leave them out if your story is different, but tell your story the way it is. And then they know, they see him. Everybody's individual and we're telling them what we want them to do. We want them to protect ACIGs. That's what we want them to do. That we need to be, they need to be, your MP needs to be talking to Anna Subri in the Department of Health and saying, look, we need to protect ACIGs. These things are a godsend. MAPs will go into plenary thinking, we need to protect ACIGs. Look at all these pictures of all of these people. And they're all different. They're all using different devices. We didn't know this. Here's the information. Get it out to them. Get it out to them. And if you want to go down to Brighton, do it. I won't, but I'm going to go to the Tory one, I think. And we'll go to there. Um, that's pretty much where we'd gotten to, I think. I think so, yeah. What, have, that, what have, we, have we got much from chat? Yes, I've got a load of comments from chat I will rattle through. Um, regarding what you were saying, Andy D says, with all that in place, that's all the mod makers gone. Gary Wood says, PG and VG are already pharma grade products. Is it just the mixing process that would then have to be regulated? And I've got a couple more things on that as well. Uh -huh. uh, Fuzzy Ann says, so we'll have nothing except lookalikes, to which Andy responded, not even those, unless made by someone with the ability stroke funds to make them. Mm -hmm. Vapor Kate Best says, PG, VG and nicotine are pharma grade, but the flavourings aren't, and the GMP requirements for production are insane. Mm -hmm. Regarding availability, Mark Shaw said, I think this is the most important point of all because it's an argument on common sense. Yep. Funny Trickster said, Truth is, they want us to go back to tobacco and ma make us feel like lesser people. No wonder they link, they link it to depression, amongst other things. Mm -hmm. Maddie Paula says, Big tobacco and big farmer were happy with the merry-go-round of smoke quit, uh, patches, back to cigarettes. Um, A6 have thrown a big, big spanner in their plans and profits. Mm -hmm. Kronos has said, I'm not sure where I've got this, but uh, of course we will. It's the uh, yeah, it's about the existing smokers that will ultimately suffer from the lack of choice. We will be able to get. We know where we can get our things from. We could probably still continue, but the existing smokers and the new generations of smokers, it's gonna. They're not even gonna know about e six. They'll be kiboshed completely, yep. totally, and utterly. It's it's taking them out of their grasp. I'm, I'm yep. sorry to jump in, but Perfect. this 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 is the non selfish part of it. Look. Fact of the matter is, all of the all of the vapors that have sat around and said, "Oh, I'm all right. I know what I'm doing. I can build my own atties. I can build my own mods. I can do this. I can do that. I can do the other." Yeah, you can. Of course, you can. And I'm telling you now, and this is this is an absolute certain fact. There was nobody on this planet more selfish than me. Trust me on this one. I was the the most selfishest bugger you would ever come across. But hey, I'm telling you what, I've had so much pleasure. Out of seeing so many people picking e cigs up and getting the benefits out of them that I get. You know? We've got to start yeah. thinking about other people. It 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 actually scares me to death that there's folks in countries in Europe that if this goes through, they've got no chance of ever seeing an e cig. The pharmacies won't take it. Nobody will be able to make one that's gonna suit the regulations. I mean, I can tell you now for a certain fact, as far as the MHRA is concerned, and having read through their guidelines, there's not an e -cig on the planet would get a marketing authorization out of the MHRA. And you can bet your bottom dollar that would be the same right the way around Europe as well. We can't let that happen. We just can't let that happen. It's, it's, it's not fair to everybody else. And as selfish as I have been, I want to see everybody be able to get e -cigs. If they don't want to use them, that's fine by me. I'm not looking to convert every tobacco user to an AC user. I'm not. If, if, as long as people know the risks and they're happy to take them, that's great. I'm not interested in being an evangelist. I just want everybody to have the choice. And I would love it if everybody else kind of th thought, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's write MPs and MEPs. Sorry. I'll back to you, uh, Sav. Uh, yeah, no problem. Vapor Caper says, innovation and, com and a competitive market is really good news for the economy as well. e cigs are the fastest growing market in decades. Mm -hmm. Chan has said, if pharma take over the e cig industry, they will not sell bottles to refill. Price of pre-filled carts are 800% more. Yes. And 
Andy D has said, Dave, the cynic in me says that's part of why Big Tobacco are pushing for medicalization to make it harder so we get back onto other products, e.g. cigarettes. Um, do you know what? Before um, you answer that, can I just interrupt your cat's asking me to make sure that you, this part of the show is taken to record? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so. every, everything's recording fine. It, it'll Brilliant. all be there in its entirety when it goes up on video on demand. Brilliant, thank Sweat you. Sweat you not about that. I've, I've made that mistake once. <laughs> Never again. Yeah. And I won't even be editing it in case I bugger it up. Um, what was that, that last bit about, about tobacco companies? Um, right, yeah. And, and them looking towards their own profits. Hey, look, it, it, all, all conspiracy theories aside, I mean, both Sav and I and a fair few others that were there last week spoke to people from the tobacco companies. And the impression I got, and I, I want to know whether you've got the same impression on this, Sav, is that they are looking to their future, yes, but they know that their, their future doesn't involve a lighter and paper and lit tobacco. They know, they are fully aware that the days of the lit cigarette are numbered. And when I was saying that to one of the people from uh, Imperial Tobacco, she said, yeah, absolutely. There's no way that the World Health Organization is gonna let up with this fight, with this battle, with this war that they've got on the tobacco companies. They know that if they're gonna make any money out of nicotine, it's gonna be either from, I'm gonna call it NRT, I'm not gonna call them licensed nicotine containing products, because those are weasel words that the MHRA came up with to try and drag e-cigs and other things in. They know that their future lies in here. That's where their future lies. That's the yeah. only way they're going to be able to maintain their products. Do you get the same impression? Yeah, and I, after talking to a few people, I got the impression that, yes, they may be in the one of the only companies that are in the position to do something about it if it's medicalised, but they did not want that to be the case. Well, no, because... Do you know what, the, 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 the product cycle on this means that they can't do what they've originally done. Now, well remember going back, oh, I don't know, about three years, um, you would see different, different tabs coming out. There was all kinds came out, wasn't there? There seemed yep. to be a glut. Every six months there was a new fag. Mm -hmm. And from what I can gather, talking to these folks last week, um, there were new regulations being pushed at them that had to have this emission and that emission. They couldn't have that in, they couldn't have this in, and they had to do this and they had to do that. So rather than kind of um, bugger up the already pertaining brands, they would bring new ones out. And yeah, the packaging was different and all that kind of stuff. They know they're not going to be able to do that in the future. Under, under medicine's regulation, under medicine's regulation, it's 30 years. I was talking uh, to someone, at, 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 again, at this meeting, and, and f I'm sorry, but I can't remember the name or where they were from, but they had very, very strong connections with Big Pharma. And they were saying that to get one product licensed would take seven years and two billion pounds. Seven years and two billion pounds because of all the tests and everything else the, the the clinical trials the failed trials and to get all of the information together that's what it currently costs pharmaceutical companies to get all right probably a big and very complicated product onto the market if you extrapolate that down you're looking at least three years and probably 50 million 60 million quid to get something acceptable to the MHRA because of the nature of smoking and nicotine and everything else. You're looking at a shed load of money to get these things on the market. It's why I keep, pardon me, keep saying, in my opinion, you'll never ever see a medicinal e -seek. They'd never get a license for it. It's pointless. It's madness. It's craziness. Mm -hmm. and, and it just, it's not going to work. It's why we've got to fight it. Um, so. I'm not sure that the tobacco companies are that keen to see medicinal regulation. I know BAT at first were, and then they found out how much it costs. They're not so keen now. Sav? I have to agree. I have to totally agree. Um, it's going to be interesting. I mean, Charlie Vapes has just typed in uh, to chat now. The phrase, light touch is annoying and blatant lie. Mm. Well, the bit, that, the bit that's always got to me about, whoops, that was clever. But it's always got to me about that is this whole notion that 
Jeremy Mean can stand and mispronounce right touch so that it sounds like light touch and think he's got away with it. He forgets that there's people out here that can read lips and right touch regulation, which he's written down, to be fair, right touch regulation for him means screw the buggers down as tight as we possibly can. And seriously, Dr. Farsalinos himself has looked at the guidelines and he said it's just impossible. You cannot adhere to the guidelines. It's impossible for an ESIG to do it. The technology doesn't exist. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go over those five points. I want you to write to your MP and your MEP. If you get no joy out of them when you've done that, ring them up. Go and see them at their surgeries. Make a nuisance of yourself, get in front of them. But if you include that picture with one or two of the devices that you like to use and they see this whole plethora, it's going to open their eyes and they might stand a bit better chance. Now, I know we've got good support in Europe, but we need to be getting to them all. And if you're watching in France, in Germany, in Italy, in Spain, no matter where you are in Europe, Romania, Hungary, all of these places, all 28, 29, however, member countries there, however many member countries there are, get hold of your MEP. Those are the five points you need to cover. Ignore all the rest. Ignore all the rest. Just go with those five points that we've covered. Very quickly again, destroying the existing supply chain, which means we can't get them. Creating a de facto ban on most products, which means we can't get them. Making e-cigs harder to buy than ordinary cigs, which means we can't get them. It favours the cigarette industry. They won't like that. And it creates the unintended consequences. Um, those are the five points that we need to cover and probably not even all of the five. Sorry, Sav, go for it. I just have to say, Kat's put those five points on our Facebook page and they'll also be put up on our forum as well. There you go. So the bullet points are there. Those are the five bullet points we need. And that I think that picture, Catherine Devlin, thank you so much. If you want to know where I was when you called, I was on the loo. But I sat there for over an hour while we talked about this. Didn't make any noise. Did afterwards. Um, we sat and talked about this. And this picture, I think, is it's a brilliant idea. And it is so, so important. It tells a thousand words. It says who you are. They can see. This is not AstroTurf. This is not a form letter that's being put together. It's you doing it. Because everyone's going to be different. The wording's going to be different. They've got to sit up and take notice. And I've spoken to one or two MEPs and aides and they've all said, yes, great idea. Do it. Do it. Talk to your MP. When you write to your MP, ask them also to contact their political ally in the European Parliament. And they've, they've more or less got to do it. It'll put pressure on them. Um, that's probably... I've, I've taught me a little pluck out. We, <laughs> before we go on to mention half past eight tomorrow for World Vaping Day, did I say half past eight tomorrow for World Va Vaping Day? He never said half past eight for World Vaping Day. Well, but is well, it half past eight? Half past eight tomorrow for World half Vaping Day. It's going to be fabulous. But have we got anything else from chat just before we mention that? A uh, couple of questions. Uh, Lamental has said, at what point would this go to UK courts as it has in Germany? Um, right, at what point? It can go to the European court. I believe there's a th it's either a three or a six month window once they've done all the necessary over there, which is it's not all going to happen until very late this year or very early next year. Then there's a three to six month window for interested parties to start a court case at the European Court of Justice. How quickly it can go to court in the UK, I don't know. Um, we would need to take advice on that, but I think the sooner the better. I don't know how quickly we can get injunctive relief. That's something that the vendors are going to have to look at, but it might also be a case that we, as consumers, can bring a court case as well. And if we can, and if it looks as though it's going to be worthwhile, trust me, you'll hear it here. I'll let you know, and I'll let you know how much we need in order to do it. Um, it won't be cheap, that much I can guarantee, unless we can find a few barristers that will do it pro bono, which apparently means for now. So I've heard. Apparently. Um, One more quick question. Go on. Um Maddie Paulus has said, is there any point in writing to Labour MPs, MEPs, they are just party line puppets? Yes, there's every point. There is absolutely every point. If you make their mailbag so big that they can't get out of bed for it, 
They've got to do something with it. We need to be polite. We need to make the points pointedly, if you like. We need to acknowledge as well when you're writing to Labour MPs and MEPs that so far they've been singing off a hymn sheet typed up by somebody else and that you would really appreciate their personal take on it and them doing what they were elected to do, which is to represent you, not to push a party line. Be firm, but be polite. And like I say, if anybody's in the environs of Brighton from Sunday for four or five days, hey, nice day out, isn't it? If I was mm. down that way, I can tell you now for a certain fact, I'd be there. I would. Would you, Sav? I would indeed. I'd have a nice wander about. Yes, apparently it's nice in Brighton. Mm, so I've heard. Apparently. Shall we talk about World Vaping Day? I think we should. We'll talk about World Vaping Day. That's before we do, before we do, I have to say, it's not just World Vaping Day. It's Bob Oldgate's birthday tomorrow as well. Is it? It is. Then I think I can promise from the heart of my cockles, no, from the cockles of my heart, that tomorrow on World Vaping Day, from half past eight, at some point, the assembled throng, and we're all doing it, it's not just a here's hour. Oh, no. No, this is a team talk like you've never seen in your life. There could be, if we get everybody together, if Tim's in and Rusty's in and Gary's in from all of the different meetups that are happening, and if you're having a meetup, let us know because we'll bring you into this massive mega hangout. We could have 300 people singing happy birthday to you, you old git. And also... Also... It's talk like a pirate day, so we can sing it like a pirate. Who oh, are? That'll be cracking. That's from half past eight until we finish. You know that nebulous until we finish? That's yeah. how long it's going to go on. It'll be half past ten at the earliest, we think. Is that right? At the earliest, I would think, yeah. But it'll, be, it'll go on till we finish. I have heard rumours, and I don't know how well substantiated they are, but apparently my brother's coming on as well. Ah, yeah, well, me and Kat have been in talks with your brother, that's all we're allowed to say. Yes, well, apparently he's coming on with Andy. I've got no idea what's going to happen then, but I, I'll not be around to watch that, I can guarantee you that. <laughs> me and my brother's been at Loggerheads. It's a, uh. it's a holiday resort in Wales. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be getting wrong off your mum, aren't we? What? Because we're two minutes over. We've got over time, but that's yeah. to make up for the two minutes that it wasn't getting broadcast. Yeah, because we're broken. Yes, people on video on demand, you've had a two minute bonus. People that are watching live, you've had your allotted 60 minutes. I think we'd better go before we get wrong. I think so, because we'll get into the hobbits again. No, don't get into the hobbits. <laughs> no. No. Why did you tell me that my hobbit name was Kiss Your Ring Piece or whatever it was? What is it called? <laughs> Your hobbit name, what is it? Oh, um, I think you were something along the lines of Drunky Ringlicker. <laughs> okay, on that note, thank you to Cat for keeping us in order. <laughs> but you didn't, did you? Can you not talk to your daughter? <laughs> Thanks to Sav for uh, doing what you do and what you do so well. Um, and and, and uh, Ahead of time, thanks to the team for what's going to be a fabulous night tomorrow night. But most of all, thank you to you for watching and for doing what you do in support of ACs. I love you all for it. It's been amazing. Thanks for sharing the last hour with us. And uh, we'll all see you tomorrow night for World Vaping Day. But until then, from Sav, from Kat and me, cheery bye. And we will see you all anon, as it were. Take care. Vape on. Vape hard. Nil carbon under Miller Bye.